you know, human beings are the most superior, the most intelligent, and arguably the most complex apex predator that God put on the face of the earth. But with all the brilliance in our design, we are still weak. We get hungry, we get thirsty, we lie, we steal, we cheat, we envy. We really can't help ourselves. That's just us. However, this is not what truly makes us weak. There are three components by which we are held captive and no matter what we do, we just can't escape. The first is time. Believe it or not, every human being is a prisoner of time. Looking at this string here, from the moment you are born, you start traveling through this string. This string represents time. This is your starting point. This is your demise. Whenever it is, you're going to die. No matter what you do, each day that goes by, you move closer to the day that you'll die and farther away from the day that you were born. So in other words, your event horizon is getting closer. And as human beings, as we traverse through time, we cannot jump backwards to change any events, nor can we move forward. As far as our memory is concerned, we only know about the past. We don't know what the future holds. Although there are some exceptions to this, there are certain human beings who can peer into your past without you ever telling them anything, and they can also peer into part of your future. Some of these people are fortune tellers, palm readers, diviners, etc. But usually they are weak because they can only see as much. And for them to see the little that they can see, they have to rely on a being that is not limited by time as we are. Our limitation is our bodies. And the beings that they rely on are free spirits. It's either they're getting the information from demons, corrupted spirits, or from God and his angelic forces. Now the second thing that holds mankind prisoner is space. We can only exist where we are, and our presence and essence cannot exist in two, three, or four places at the same time. Although some argue that if you stand in front of a mirror, that it means there's a parallel universe on the other side of the mirror. But that's not true. We remain prisoners of space for as long as we have a body. And the third is matter. We do not have the freedom to alter our matter. We cannot move from solid to gas or gas to solid or go from the third dimension to the fourth and back. We are limited in this regard. You will never in your lifetime escape these limitations. But perhaps in the afterlife it will be different. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because now that we've established that human beings are limited in that we don't have the ability to manipulate time, space or matter like God can, then we ought to learn to accept our fates. If you take a loss in life, accept it and move on. There's nothing that you can do to change what happened in the past. But there are lessons that can be learned which will inform better decisions in the future and there's nothing you lose that you cannot regain. Even I have lost very many things in this very lifetime. At one point, I couldn't pay rent for my office and the landlord seized all my furniture. I pestered the guy on phone for an entire year. Eventually, he told me, come get your furniture. At one point, we've all lost loved ones, friends, business opportunities. Loss is part of this life. But the one thing that's impossible is going back in time to try and change events. Even God, great as he is, there is no evidence of God in the Bible or in any other book that you can find going back in time to change events that took place. I've only seen God going forward in time through prophecy and telling people what will happen in the future. And also I've seen him freezing time when he told Joshua to raise his hands and the sun stood still so that his armies can fight. But going back in time, we are yet to see that. So I would advise Mr. Raila Odinga, just accept what happened on August 9, 2022. Stop trying to go back in time through chaos and mandamano with the hopes of changing events that have already passed. 2022 August 9 was an event horizon. And as we know, if you hit an event horizon, there is no turning back. You cannot get out of it. Even light cannot escape the event horizon of a black hole. So let's just accept that the past is the past. We are human beings. We are limited by time, space, and matter. And no matter what we do, we continue to travel through time. Everyone is racing to their deadline, the day that they die. So it only makes sense to do something meaningful with the time that you have left than trying to turn back time to fix what cannot be undone. Chebukati cannot unsign that certificate and declare someone else as president. Chirera today cannot be returned as IEBC commissioner. It's over. So let's move forward. Let's accept that we are limited beings and trying to go back in time to change events is science fiction. No dialogue, no chaos, no violence, no nusumkate can change anything that has already taken place. History is written and it can't be undone. It can only be destroyed. But as usual, guys, that's just my opinion. Do drop me on comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. Now, in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube. Search for David Wafula. Hit the subscribe button. You're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. All right, guys. Adios.
Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.